Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. And so from that experience, I found that autistic children actually also have benefits of yoga. So actually yoga is for everyone, but it needs to be adjusted according to every person. Continue watching to find out more. Sveiki means hello in Latvian, the official language of Latvia, as well as one of the official languages of the European Union. Honored viewers, I'm Aya. The lovely people of Latvia wish for you to be happy, healthy and enlightened. Welcome to our program, Ananda Dara Yoga Village, Helping People Attain Bliss, Part 1 of 3. Yoga originated in India more than 5,000 years ago. It was introduced to Western society in the 19th century. Since then, this ancient wisdom has transcended all boundaries and spread to every corner of the globe. The many benefits it brings to body, mind and spirit have made yoga not only a popular form of exercise, but also a kind of lifestyle. Today, we are privileged to introduce you to Rutger Taminga, the co-founder of a special institution that endeavors to spread the yoga spirit the Anandadara Yoga Village, Center for Applied Neohumanism, based in Taichung City, Taiwan, also known as Formosa. The center was established in 1995 by Mr. Taminga, who is originally from the Netherlands, and Mohamukta of Formosa. Anandadara, which means abode of bliss, in Sanskrit is a place aspiring to promote and apply the Neo-Humanism philosophy of the venerated Indian spiritual guru Sri Prabhat Ranjan Sarkar, also known as Baba, through many initiatives including yoga and wellness classes for different age groups and people with special needs, group meditation, yoga teacher training and storytelling workshops. Starting from scratch, 25 years ago, the couple eventually established this mountain spiritual retreat center in a beautiful setting. They have also founded a kindergarten, published an assortment of yoga-themed educational materials for children, such as storybooks, music CDs and kindergarten curriculums. Many of their trained yoga teachers have established their own centers for children and are now training the next generation of yoga instructors. In this episode, Rutger shares his perspectives on yoga and now provides an overview of the practice. Yoga goes back 7,000 years and it started in the Himalayas in India. And Originally, it was taught from master to disciple, disciple, teach another disciple. Now, over the years, there have been many changes. So basically, yoga, you can separate into four main directions, hatha yoga, karma yoga, 
bhakti yoga and jnana. Uh, hatha yoga means the physical exercise. So when you say the common yoga, this is what we usually see in the advertising uh, and the commercials. And the yoga centers, they advertise hatha yoga, means the physical yoga. Now the second yoga is the yoga of bhakti devotion. Devotional yoga is about purifying the heart by surrendering your, your small self to the infinite. And then we have the karma yoga. Karma yoga means the yoga of action. So uh, usually people associate yoga with leaving the world. But karma yoga says, no, you stay in the society with your family, you do your work, but through your work, you keep an awareness of your inner being. And then the last yoga is jnana yoga, the yoga of knowledge, the philosophy. But actually, uh, every practice has something of these four aspects of yoga. Now, there are some people, they may practice more of the knowledge. They like philosophy. They like to train their intellect and have a deeper understanding of life. And uh, another direction is people maybe don't like too much logic or an analysis, and they will use a more devotional approach. And they feel sweetness in singing about the universe and the power of the beauty of life. Now, so personally, I practice what we call Raja Yoga. Raja means the king, and it's more a mental practice. So my, my path, what I learned, is more about meditation. And so yoga has different aspects of meditation, breathing, visualization, purification of the mind. Mr. Taminga feels yoga practitioners should pay close attention to diet and discusses his vegetarian lifestyle. Part of the reason why the, the world is heating up is because of meat production. Um, but to come back to the, the yoga side of, of our diet, there are other foods we also avoid taking. Uh, apart from meat, we don't eat eggs. They are not good for our mental peace. And uh, this kind of sensitivity develops when you practice more. The idea of yoga is to develop a purer mind, a more stable and peaceful mind. And our food affects how we think. So if we eat food that makes us more aggressive or makes us lethargic or dull, then this is not going to help our yoga practice. We will pause a moment for a positive message and then return. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to our program, Ananda Dara Yoga Village, Helping People Attain Bliss, Part 1 of 3. Mr. Taminga now elaborates on his views regarding the core benefits of practicing yoga, which include making many important self-discoveries. Yoga has many different benefits. The real purpose of yoga is to find your inner identity. Now, in this path, you, you can get rid of many confusions and many uh, illusions. Now this already frees the mind. So when you feel a purer self, you don't identify yourself with maybe a social identity or with a, a made up identity. You find your own beauty. Now when you find your own beauty, then 
the, the first benefit is you feel happier. And I think that's what most people really want. Not only people, if you're all living beings, like we're here in the forest, every little plant, every little creature actually wants happiness. Now, human beings have this chance to find infinite happiness. Now, the yoga practice is there to, to bring this. So the, one side is the mental benefit. And the other side, of course, you feel healthier. And you do the yoga postures, the twisting, the, the stretching. Your, your body feels better. So and you feel healthier. Your digestion will be better. Your lungs will be cleaner. So there are many benefits on this side. The peer-reviewed journal Frontiers in Psychiatry published an article regarding youth and yoga. It stated, Yoga may also aid in shifting self-awareness in ward to children's own cues and emotions, and thus counteract negative social and cultural influences including the current media pressure to be always online and available, as yoga often results in improved focus and concentration. Regular practice is frequently accompanied by better academic performance. Yoga has also been shown to help children with attention problems, as well as to support executive function development. Mr. Taminga has much experience in teaching yoga to youngsters and shares some of the insights he has gained. Actually, it's very interesting. Um, like, I teach yoga to children. And if you had asked me this 25 years ago, can children do yoga? I would have said no, because traditionally, Yoga is for people from 12 years onwards. And when the body is more mature, and so we can do the adult yoga with 12-year-olds and up. Uh, now we do yoga with babies. And they're like, now I'm a grandfather. I have a small granddaughter. And when you help her stretch her joints and stretch her, her limbs, she feels wonderful. And she will not stop. She wants you to continue to help her. So actually, yoga can be done by everybody. Um, we also do yoga with children who have special needs. And, you know, um, together with my, my wife, we have a kindergarten. And in our school, we get children who have maybe developmental problems. And we have found yoga to be beneficial to these children also. And uh, the first kid I got, her name was Sandy and she is autistic. And when she came to school uh, for the first few months, she could not cooperate with the teacher. She could not respond to the teacher. And um, so then every day I would put a yoga mat on the floor. And I would say, Sandy, come. For three months, she didn't let me touch her body. But then after some time, she saw her classmates were joining. So then she came. And every day, Monday to Friday, I would spend 20 minutes with her help her do basic stretching, what we do in yoga. Now, the first thing I noticed is that her immune system got much better. She used to have a runny nose, and this, this stopped. And after another six months, this child, from not talking, she was able to communicate. And so, from that experience, I found that autistic children actually also have benefits of yoga. So actually yoga is for everyone, but it needs to be adjusted according to every person. So there's not one yoga for everybody. There are many forms of yoga that are suitable for different situations, different ages. But first, we will briefly cover the yoga practices that Sri P.R. Sarkar's spiritual organization Ananda Marga, meaning the path of bliss, propagates. Ananda Marga's techniques of self-realization include yoga posters, kirtan, kaushiki, and meditation. In the Western world, people tend to equate yoga solely with yoga posters. However, this only accounts for a small but essential part of the entire system 
and serves as preparation for meditation. Yoga postures are known as asanas in Sanskrit, which means postures giving physical comfort and mental composure. In addition to strengthening the body's muscles, asanas put pressure on the glands of the endocrine system which regulate the secretion of hormones to assist emotional balance and in turn facilitate concentration during meditation. Here is yet another example of how asanas can promote health. As we grow older, two hormones, growth hormone or GH, and dehydroepiandrosterone sulfate or DHEAS are released less and less by the body and the reduced production is associated with aging. A study with middle-aged participants sought to see if yoga could stem the decline of the creation of these two hormones. It was found that a 12-week yoga training course involving practicing yoga six days a week significantly increased the levels of GH and DHEAS in the 23 men and women participating in the research. For Ananda Marga practitioners, Kirtan is the singing of the mantra Baba Nam Kevalam, which means my most beloved is the only one, with the ideation of everywhere I look, in everything I hear, feel, see, taste and smell. I perceive that one supreme consciousness which pervades all things. They believe that kirtan helps to purify the mind and the singing can be conducted with many types of music. The best time to perform it is said to be right before meditation to achieve the best mental clarity. Kaushiki is a yogic dance and the term comes from the word kosa in Sanskrit meaning layer of mind. Kaushiki consists of 18 rhythmical movements that have several spiritual meanings and the dance is typically done for 5 to 21 minutes. According to its creator, Sri P. R. Sarkar, by performing Kaushiki, one can build the link between one's innermost self, hidden within multiple layers of the mind, and the Supreme Consciousness. This results in an enhancement of stamina and strength of the mind and the blossoming of the innermost self. Kaushiki is said to be especially beneficial to women as it may help to resolve menstrual irregularities and make deliveries easier for pregnant women by reducing the pain of childbirth. According to the Ananda Marga website, the dance has 22 therapeutic effects in total on the body and mind. Other benefits include increasing one's longevity, ending lethargy, removing fear complexes, resolving arthritis and gout, and curing of kidney and gallbladder issues and liver diseases. It is usually danced to a song containing the phrase Baba Nam Kevalam. All of these techniques serve to prepare for the core practice, meditation. Rutger Taminga feels that all can benefit from practicing the holistic yogic lifestyle. Now, yoga brings you in touch with your inner self. So this connects with everybody. So actually, I can say that everybody welcomes this practice of yoga in one form or another. How much they do in their own life depends on, on our faith an effort and real need. And sometimes it's really that when you're in trouble, you start looking for these things. And it helps us build the strength to overcome our troubles. And yoga is not just only what you do on the yoga mat. And yoga is life. You have your values, your morality, your discipline. And everybody wants to have that positive focus. That is yoga. This experienced yoga teacher believes it is important for children to have exposure to meditation and yoga at a young age. He explains. I learned yoga uh, when I was 15. Uh, I, actually, I first got yoga philosophy when I was 12. I had a classmate and her father was into philosophy. So he lent me books about Eastern philosophy. 
And uh, it was very confusing for me because it's very different from what we are used to in the West. And then um, when I was 15, I learned meditation. And my mother took me to learn meditation. Though my family is not vegetarian and my family also is not into yoga. But she saw on TV a program that said, hey, meditation is good for headache. And the time I was not feeling good, so she said, don't, maybe you don't need to take medicine, just go and do meditation. So we went, I went with my mom to learn meditation when I was 15. I never stopped. Every morning, every evening, for all this time, and now I'm 60, so 45 years, I've been doing meditation every day. It's, it's my life. And um, so you can learn meditation when you are young. Now, for the very small children, there is not so much need to learn meditation because their mind is already in that kind of free environment, that free consciousness. Now, the problem is these kids are going to grow up. So if we don't teach them when they are small, when they become teenagers, they may be not able to accept this kind of lifestyle. So we like to train children from a young age to sit down and be quiet with themselves, to learn their body and, and find peace. And we don't need to do it for a long time. But so when they are to become teenagers, they don't have such a conflicted mind and they know a path to find their own peace because they learned it from when they were small. Another thing we see with yoga for small children and below the teenager years, let's say up to 10, 11, uh, yoga is a kind of sensory integration practice. So for many kids nowadays, we see that they have some behavioral imbalances, maybe hyperactive, um, maybe slow speech development, maybe uh, they cannot concentrate, these kind of problems kids yoga can be beneficial and so actually the practice can be used for different ages and what really inspired me is, is of course there are so many great teachers and without great teachers you, you don't learn so there are pe there are people who have done things before us and from them we learn and then we start to practice with our children and the different ages and I think we have to be very thankful to this lineage of this yoga family <laughs> where we all grow together to develop better human beings. In the previous episodes, we introduced the Center's yoga philosophy and practices with Mr. Taminga sharing his perspectives regarding the importance of yoga education for children. In today's show, he discusses positive changes that have happened to some of his young students with special needs and their families while practicing yoga. The kind gentleman also provides us with his broader reflections on the potential of yoga to elevate humanity. After I met Sandy, that autistic student, and I saw the benefits and you know, I think this is a kind of arrangement by the universe. Uh, I was invited to give speeches to teachers who are teaching special needs children. And they started to use what I showed them, what I did with Sandy. And they called me back and again and again, I had to share more and more knowledge about yoga. And from that experience and that, that teaching, I started to open more and more classes for the Autistic Association. Uh, we are in hospitals where we are working with children with special needs, where we have weekly classes for parents and kids. And I think the most beautiful thing that I see is families become more peaceful. Because yoga basically, ultimately, is about growing love. And that love feeling, that unconditional openness, is what yoga gives you. So when in a family, a mother, a father, the children, they practice together, 
or they have some time in the day where they do massage, where there's no pressure for homework or cleaning the house or any other thing. It's just pure you and me. That, that feeling of connection is so, so trust building and so peaceful that, that this, I think, is the most beautiful gift in, that we see with yoga for children and yoga in families. It changes the whole family dynamic. In general, Mr. Taminga has also observed growth in all his child students. These constructive transformations are on the physical and emotional level. The way we teach children yoga is not the way we teach adults, okay? So adults maybe is more serious and quiet. In our kids' yoga, we, we sing, we tell stories, we play games. But we, so we have active periods and we have slower times where children can more be relaxed. And uh, so the first thing I think children learn is they don't just get excited, they also know how to cool down. And they know how to find their peace. Now I think this is what something all the children should learn, is that how to find their own peace. And we have a teacher in Malaysia, she's very wonderful. And she tells her children, you must find your peace button. And sometimes the children said, teacher, I don't know where to find my peace button. I said, well, you have to, sp you have to spend more time, maybe try some breathing, maybe you'll find your peace button. And so actually this is a very nice thing, the first benefit. Now the second benefit is children who do regular kids yoga whether it's with their parents or in the class. They don't get sick so often. They don't easily get colds. They don't easily get fevers. They have a better digestion. Their lungs are stronger. Their immune system is better. I think this is wonderful. Now, the third benefit I would think of now is emotional stability. Because yoga is about learning who you are your feelings, your thoughts, you have to learn to observe them and analyze them and then work with them. And so yoga creates this kind of distance within yourself that you, if you have an emotion, you don't just burst out and act out on that emotion. You use your peaceful mind to analyze and understand why you have this emotion. What can you do with that emotion? How can you be more positive with that emotion? So on that level, EQ level, I think that's more beautiful. And another benefit is that children who are connected with their inner universe they make better choices in life. So yoga gives this wisdom to make better choices in life. And I wish that for everybody. I think we can have a better world. And so we have a slogan, yoga in schools, peace in the world. Yoga practice can uplift our lives tremendously. As more and more people take up yoga, we may see a positive global shift in consciousness, leading to a more balanced and harmonious planet. We asked Mr. Taminga for his thoughts on what represents a true yoga practitioner. A yoga practitioner in, in Sanskrit, in yoga we use Sanskrit a lot. Sadaka means somebody who disciplines, himself or herself and moves to a sense of inner perfection. Now we are all in the process, so I wouldn't put myself higher than anybody. Um, sometimes I joke that I have to be a teacher to be a better student, to learn more. And so some ways I think we are all in the same path, all in the pipeline. And we all have to move forward. And I think the, the main thing for everybody is not to waste time. Do your practices, listen to your teachers, and find your own inner wisdom.
every opportunity we get, we should take that. And uh, every, every teaching, every, every book, or every inspiration, treasure that inspiration. And like in the Buddhist ways, even our enemies are maybe our greatest blessings for becoming more aware of our own inner self. So that, that thankfulness and that uh, active attitude for le learning is, is what keeps us alive. Like now I'm 60, but still I feel I'm just like a child learning and learning and learning. So there's never a stage where you are too big to learn or too famous or too well-known or too capable. Um, there are many stories in the yoga tradition of great masters and who at a certain old age lost everything they worked for because they gave up not working on themselves. My teacher said, don't work till you die. Even while dying, you have to work. Me work means work on yourself. Finally, we asked Rutger Taminga what he would say if he had a chance to meet Supreme Master Qinghai. Actually, a master is known by the disciples. When I see all of you and the sweetness and the, the peace that comes from your hearts, uh, it's all the blessing of the master in you. So I think it's a gratefulness to have all of you with us today here. The noble endeavors of Rutger Taminga and Mohamukta that assist people in attaining a blissful life through practicing yoga continue to bear fruit. May their mission of spreading the seeds of universal love be welcomed by everyone they meet. To learn more about the Ananda Dara Yoga Village, please visit facebook.com forward slash sevacenter.com dot tw. Lively viewers, thank you for your company today on our program. Up next is Tim Kuo Tu's Love Will Win, part 6 of 9, on Between Master and Disciples, right after Noteworthy News. May all of us perceive our inner oneness with the Divine. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash hl. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule et suprememastertv.com bar oblique hl. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com bar inclinada schedule et suprememastertv.com bar inclinada hl. Programa de nuestra ofera multilingue. Vous pouvez vous être suite à PEP. SupremeMasterTV.com/barobica schedule, she SupremeMasterTV.com/barobica halu.